What's up gearheads, it's Trev, and today at the garage, we're going to be removing and rebuilding the double cardan front drive shaft. I'm still getting that squeaking noise, if you recall, I was talking about one in my uh, brake upgrade video. Well, I'm thinking it's in the front drive shaft. Um, I can definitely feel the one of the U-joints in the double cardan is binding up pretty bad. It's hard to move around. Here's why you don't buy cheap Chinese stuff. I was trying to press out the uh, U-joints, decided to use my C-clamp, and when I finally heard a click and it started moving, I was like, oh good, I got them free. No, no, that broke. I don't remember if that was, I think this was an AutoZone special however many years ago. It's like the second time I've used it. <laughs> Buy quality tools. So I got out the big hammer. Was able to free up these U-joints, but here's the bad news, guys. That's the part that's bad. <sighs> ah, don't look so hot. Not at all. Both the U-joints are moving around okay, so... I'm gonna go ahead and replace the U-joints while I got it all apart, but before I can put it 100% back together, I'm gonna have to get a new ball joint for the inside of that double carton. All right, I got the drive shaft stripped down. This ball joint for the double carton is smoked. Nothing but rusty needle bearings coming out. Believe it or not, parts store has one in stock. It's 45 freaking dollars, but I'm gonna go get it. I showed you guys in a previous video how to do U-joints. Um, for the double cardan, for this H-yoke, it's the same thing. You might have to wiggle things around a little more. It's just a little more tedious a job. Um, but it's, it's really not as hard as a lot of people think it is. So once you've got your drive shaft disassembled and your U-joints apart, you got the ball joint here. And this needs to come apart for the rebuild kit. For the 45 bucks, I was hoping it was going to be this whole thing, but that's pretty much it. You get a new spring, um, this new ball joint. In between the spring and the needle bearings, there's a little cardboard sleeve in there. That cardboard sleeve is just to retain the needle bearings while this is in its box. Um, so when you reassemble this, upon final reassembly, make sure to remove that cardboard sleeve. It doesn't belong in there when you put it all back together. So we gotta get this spent piece out, so we're just gonna pry out this ball joint. Yeah. All right. That might be harder if your ball joint's in better shape. But mine was pretty bad. Well, now I really might be in trouble. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together and hope it works, but I am gonna need to replace this whole thing, because if you look inside you can see that it's worn out on the inside well due to pre-existing plans I kind of have to make this work right now so with this cup worn the way it is it's only a matter of time before this fails again like I said I really would have preferred to have just replaced the whole thing and I know you can get them you can actually even get greasable versions so if you're doing this job it might just be better to spend the money and get this entire unit so what we're going to do now is use the vise and the socket to press the new ball joint in. And make sure you go the right direction. You want the end with the spring facing out. I should probably not be wearing these dirty gloves. And very gently and carefully press this into the cup. to make things operate a little smooth and I should have done this before trying to press that in but I'm just gonna put just a couple of spritzes of white lithium I don't know if it's good or bad or what that's in there I can feel that's binding too though as is really need to replace the whole thing on this one but at least you guys get to see how this goes together so now I'm actually gonna go back to the vise 
and I'm just gonna double check that I have this all pressed in properly. I really need to mount this vise. Yeah, see, I had a little more to go. And now that we're seated better, this actually moves way better. So you gotta make sure you're pressed all the way in. The last step of this for the ball joint section is to put your grease cap in. Just find a socket that's about the right size, lightly tap it in. Once you're done with the ball joint, next step, Reassemble the U-joint in the end of the drive shaft for the double card in. So you got your U-joint in. Slide on your H-yoke. Get the caps on here and get that attached. With the H-yoke installed, now the spring goes right in there. I put little scratch marks on the top of my H-yoke, the drive shaft, and on this piece so I can orient everything properly for balance. So I'm going to find my marks, line everything back up. So this is the point where you take your cardboard sleeve out. And now the ball end with the needle bearings is going to slide right over that spring and onto here. That's it, it's on. I got spring pressure. Now, you gotta get your other U-joint in the end here. I skipped a step. Don't forget this dust shield. All right guys, when you're reassembling this section, it can be difficult because you got the spring tension from this thing. Uh, just make sure that everything moves nice and easy. I had to take this apart once or twice um, because I would actually have a needle bearing fall out of the cap and go to the bottom of the cap So once I got everything snugged up, it was real tight. You don't want to crack a cap. You don't want to lose a needle bearing It'll ruin your day real quick So the last part of this is just sliding these caps on um, Before I do that, I'm gonna put the u-joint in the front section Before I do that, I'm gonna put the u-joint in the front section of the drive shaft and uh, then I'll put all the caps back on. We'll get back under the Jeep and bolt it up. So one more quick tip before I bolt this back in under the Jeep. Probably better when you do this U-joint to try and lay it in first with these caps on. Because I had a hell of a time prying them back and forth. I kept dropping needle bearings. It's my first time doing one of these guys. Just trying to share the learning process. Removing the front drive shaft is not like removing the rear. There's no slip yoke. Uh, this piece right here will compress a little bit, um, which acts like your slip yoke. I don't even know if that's what that's officially called, but anyway. The front portion by the axle, remove it just like the rear drive shaft. The portion at the transfer case is actually like the other end. Back on the back on the back side of this uh, cardan joint, the double cardan, are four eight millimeter bolts going this way. They thread in towards the front of the vehicle. Those are what hold in the drive shaft. So you need to remove those four bolts on the back side, the four on the front, and you can squeeze it together. Um, the ones on the transfer case side do come from the factory with just a dab of uh, thread locker. So they might be a little difficult to get loose. You can get in there with the skids pan still on. So I got the front drive shaft bolted back in. Uh, the double cardan joint, it's a little bit of a pain. It's a little tricky, but now that I've done it once, I'm pretty confident that if I do one again, I'll be pretty good at it. Shouldn't take near as long. Um, you guys have any questions about it, feel free to post in the comments below. Otherwise, talk to you later.